Lindsey Graham went full neocon yesterday to the surprise of no one, urging the American military to, quote, hit Iran and blow it off the map. Here he is saying just that on Fox News. I've been saying for six months now, hit Iran. They have oil fields out in the open. They have the um, Revolutionary Guard headquarters you can see from space. Blow it off the map. GOP presidential hopeful Vivek Ramaswamy slammed Graham. He said, for centuries, American statesmen reviled the thought of civilian deaths and viewed war as a last resort. Now we have the likes of Lindsey Graham and Nikki Haley giddy about blowing Iran off the map. This is disgusting and says a lot about the kind of GOP they're trying to resuscitate. Ramaswamy was joined by conservative commentator Jackson Hinkle, who tweeted, remember when Graham was talking like this about Russia, then Putin single-handedly defeated NATO in Ukraine. Well, I don't know, Jessica, about uh, Jackson Hinkle. I think he um, has some issues with his uh, alleged Russia propaganda. But um, I agree with Vivek Ramaswamy for sure. The idea that Lindsey Graham is running around calling for us to bomb you, uh, Iran is obviously of no surprise, but very disturbing and exactly the kind of Republican that was supposed to go away when Trump won in 2015. He was one of the first candidates on the right side of the aisle to talk about endless war, to reject endless war, to call for bringing troops home from places like Afghanistan and Syria. And the neocons really went out of fashion, um, but they're trying to make a resurgence. The fact that Nikki Haley is polling second in New Hampshire and rising in Iowa and is backed by these mega GOP donors shows obviously that they're not going quietly. And it's uh, of great disturbance to people like myself who consider ourselves more America first focused and think that there's enough problems going on at home without us trying to go around and get involved in needless war. And there's always this argument from the neoconservatives and the neoliberals where they claim that we have to strike first because it proves America's strength and keeps us safer. And yet in so many instances over the past 20 to 30 years, we see that the opposite is true, that they basically end up creating sleeper terror cells. They create power vacuums for unsavorable groups to take power from who they thought was bad, turns out the alternative is worse, and create all kinds of instability and human death. Um, so I don't think anyone is buying this argument anymore, but this is clearly an impulse, um, a deeply seated impulse that people like Lindsey Graham are just incapable of getting out of their system. Yeah, absolutely. I think most of the American people don't see war as a path to peace. I think they, they see diplomacy as the way forward. And I think this has everything to do with the fact that on December 27th, Russia and Iran both made it official that they can trade in their local currencies, that people doing trade can use non-SWIFT banking systems, and they can ditch the U.S. dollar. Of course, now both of them are subject to, to sanctions by the United States. But this threatens U.S. supremacy to have people trading not in the U.S. dollar, countries trading among countries. It, it really threatens decades of hegemony. And so when you say something like wipe this country off of the map, I don't really think it's about Iran funding the Houthis, which are attacking ships. Uh, I don't I don't think it's about those kinds of Israel-Palestine hostilities. I think it absolutely has everything to do with the fact that the United States is threatened by any kind of cooperation between Russia and Iran. And I think it really has everything to do with the United States clinging on to controlling global trade by having the US dollar be the standard currency used. And it's about time they recognize that there are many other countries that are using different currencies and that there really isn't any good reason why the United States should be controlling international trade. That's something that the United States is going to have to let go. And it really is a long held view by the neocons that we have to protect U.S. hegemony at all costs. Uh, we can protect, you know, the lives of the American people. We can protect U.S. interests without saying things like we need to wipe uh, Israel away. We need to, to blow, or sorry, we need to wipe uh, Iran away. We need to blow Iran up. It, Lindsey Graham had similar things to say about Hamas uh, after October 7th and the Palestinian people. And it's yeah. really dangerous. I think people are over it. But what does Iran think? This prominent political figure, Lindsey Graham, now saying this, this is only going to intensify, intensify hostilities and put the American people at risk. 
Yeah, and I, I wonder if Lindsey Graham thinks that he's Donald Trump or something and he can say these things uh, when he doesn't have the power to actually do anything about it either. Because one of Trump's strategies when he was in office in terms of his foreign policy was he still understood the idea of peace through strength, but that didn't mean that he was wantonly bombing uh, countries whenever they didn't do what was exactly in American interest. He was very reserved with his use of military power. He was seeking to bring troops home, but he also rhetorically and in diplomacy with other countries was very clear about what would happen if those countries were to not just sacrifice American interests, but American lives, if those people were to come at the United States in a way that actually were to either kill American troops, threaten the American people like North Korea was with its missile launches at the time. And so I think there's a fundamental difference between what uh, what Trump was doing when he was saying um, that rocket man in North Korea was going to face consequences or that Iran was going to face consequences, the likes of which they had never seen, um, because that was more geared towards the protection of American life. What Lindsey Graham is talking about in terms of the trade routes and their alliance with Russia is about preemptively trying to basically destroy relationships he doesn't like, but hasn't thought through the consequences of what other relationships that could bring up. Who else would we be driving in the arms of Russia or Iran if we were to bomb one or the other, or if, or if we were to put boots on the ground in Ukraine? It seems like they react in this uh, very emotional, heated way where they want to do something immediately that is incredibly violent and causes massive loss of life without thinking through five, 10 years, even 20 down the line, what is this actually going to mean for American interests when these countries respond and make other decisions about their own security and livelihoods based on what the United States is doing? Right. I think that's absolutely correct. They're not thinking long term whatsoever, not just about the retaliation of neighboring countries, but that this is not a permanent solution to a problem by any means to just blow up anyone who is resisting U.S. hegemony is insane. Anyone who disagrees with what the United States is up to. It's not just Iran that doesn't favor the United States support of Israel right now and how the United States is supplying weapons to violence in the region and has been for quite some time. You had over 90 percent of countries represented in the General Assembly of the United Nations say that they want a ceasefire. How many countries would be upset a little bit at the very least if the United States just decided to to bomb Iran seemingly as Graham would want with weapons of mass destruction it would be insane also what would happen to that land afterwards would the then people who settle on that land be totally cool with with the United States controlling global trade presumably not we need solutions that are going to resolve problems by wiping the people living in Iran out you're not going to solve anything. There are many other countries uh, that don't want the United States to be involved in wars abroad and be picking winners and losers and supplying the many weapons they had. It's not just Iran. And so I think it's it's an ignorant perspective. And it's, it's one that I'm surprised Lindsey Graham is bold enough to utter today. I would I just expect better from anyone who's been in public office and has been a prominent figure for some time. Because it's so dangerous, we could have retaliation against U.S. citizens because of this threat. He is threatening people in the United States by saying we would do something like this. And so, you know, I think it's dangerous. And, and Vivek Ramaswamy, I don't always agree with him, but is definitely right on this. Yeah, unfortunately, I think Lindsey Graham is just going to continue to beat this drum like he has been for a while. I think if there's any solace, it's um, that he doesn't have the unilateral power to actually do what he's saying. And the Biden administration clearly doesn't have an appetite at this point to wipe Iran off the map, as he's saying. Um, and I think a, a more uh, judicious uh, response to what's happening in the Red Sea would be for the U.S. to ramp up its energy production, um, continue to uh, get oil domestically, um, and as well as uh, bring back, reshore a lot of its other supply chains, um, because that is in itself a national security issue. The fact that you have to rely on notoriously unreliable trade partners around the world, whether it's uh, people in the Middle East or China or what have you, for so many of your important goods. We saw the dangers of that during the pandemic when China was restricting access to personal protective equipment 
it is long past time for us to take that approach to the issue of supply chains or trade routes um, being threatened by people like the Houthis by making sure that America has the ability to supply so much of these things ourselves, especially since we are able to do it. It seems like we just don't have the will to actually uh, to, to bring those those things home. We'll be back with more rising after this.